Hi, I'm Steve Sample with Bama Talk. Don't miss a single episode of Bama Talk Show available now on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app and on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com. This is your Weather Extreme video for Saturday, March the 23rd. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks for tuning in. Here's a look at the radar. Some of us awoke to some Early morning thunder this morning, and I have a dog that doesn't particularly like that, so uh, a little late running the blog post this morning. There's a look at the SkyCam network from the Alpha SkyCam network at ABC 3340. You can see the rain occurring at Inverness. Should be dying off some. Already died off, but the streets are still wet at Fayette. Surface front is laid across the area with uh, more or less kind of a stationary front, but it's also one that's sagging to the south, but we're getting... These little disturbances that are these little waves that are moving along that front, helping to increase our chances for rain. In the upper atmosphere, we still have the major trough off to our west, but we're getting little short waves that are moving through the flow that are helping to enhance the showers and thunderstorms. You can see there's quite a difference uh, north of the front, which is basically north of Montgomery. You basically see we're in the 40s. When you get south of that, we quickly get into the 60s as we get down to the coastline. And that's going to have an impact on where our severe weather is likely to be today. The uh, regional map shows where uh, much of the precipitation is going just uh, before 7 a.m. this morning, and you can see we still have showers and thunderstorms back out to the west. QPF-wise, we're going to see uh, on the order of 1 to 2 inches, especially along the Gulf Coast. I think that is going to be the uh, bulk of the focus for any uh, significant precipitation and significant thunderstorms. SPC is out looking a rather large area, extending all the way from uh, a little bit to the uh, west of Waco, all the way across Louisiana, most of uh, the southern two-thirds of Mississippi and Alabama, a good chunk of Georgia, and over to Jacksonville, covering all of the Gulf Coast area. That is the day one. That is for today. Day two, slight risk area is posted for southern Georgia and the uh, northern half of the Florida Peninsula, approximately. And I think uh, perhaps the greatest threat for severe weather today is actually going to be a little further to the south. I think the SPCs may have gone a little bit too far north. All right, let's get to modeling. And here is the GFS model for uh, today at 1 p.m. Uh, and we should see a little bit of a lull in the, in the rain uh, by, um, oh, just probably by 9 a.m. or so. We should be more or less drying out. We'll still have a few showers around. We probably stay dry for a good portion of the early afternoon. And then by the time we get to uh, just after midnight, we've got another wave coming along. But it looks like the warm front is going to stay to our south. As long as the warm front stays to our south, then we're probably going to be out of the risk. We need to get into the warm sector to have the risk of severe storms. And it looks like Perhaps, uh, say, from about Montgomery, maybe as far north as Clanton, but uh, probably from Montgomery southward. It doesn't mean we won't have any severe thunderstorms. It just means, I think, the, the bulk of the, the thunderstorm activity will be further south. And by the way, there's the map for uh, 18Z or 1 p.m. Uh, tomorrow. And by then, we should be drying out once again as the cold air is still further back in Arkansas, but definitely we should be drying out. Let's take a look at some of the parameters. And there's a look at the Cape for uh, about 7 p.m. today, and the Cape values off the GFS. There is the Cape values for uh, midnight, or 1 a.m. actually, and you can see staying well to the south. And uh, finally, there's the Cape values for uh, 18Z tomorrow or 1 p.m. on Sunday. And yes, we could hear a little thunder tomorrow because we do get a little spike in there uh, for the Cape values around this area. Now, looking at shear and looking at the bulk shear uh, values from the surface to 700 millibars, and there is some shear there uh, today. This is, uh, once again, around 7 p.m. Uh, there are values that come up, but again, the Cape, the, the, the instability is further to the south. Um, so I think the the bulk of the severe weather threat, I think, is going to be from Montgomery southward. Now let's move on out into the future, and uh, you can see that uh, 18Z Sunday, uh, the upper air pattern, there is the uh, a strong uh, lobe coming through the, the flow, the, a strong short wave moving uh, through um, eastern Kentucky. By Monday, that um, strong Vorticity Center is well over to the mid-Atlantic coast, but you notice that we're getting kind of a almost a, 
uh, east-west lobe in that uh, low that is stretching back across Kansas, uh, Missouri and Kansas. So I don't think we're completely out of the woods as far as uh, the cold air getting in here as, as strongly as it will. You see Monday is going to be a much colder uh, day, but we've got some wraparound moisture. We may still see uh, clouds and we may still see some, some light precipitation. 540 line down around Montgomery, so the cold air finally getting in here. By Tuesday, that lobe has come through and that should then drop the 540 line all the way down to the Gulf Coast in the vicinity of Mobile. So uh, Tuesday going to be a, a bit of a chilly day for sure. Wednesday we begin to see some improvement but uh, I don't think we're going to warm up that much especially for Wednesday morning. We'll warm up probably getting uh, into the upper 50s maybe near 60 for most locations on Wednesday. Thursday uh, the the ridge is still a little slow to get to us but it certainly is is moving here so once again Thursday an improving day as far as uh, temperatures and then the ridge begins to get over us uh, and over the lower Mississippi River Valley by Friday so that should indeed warm us up and you can see that the 540 line is pushed uh, northward into the central Appalachians and into the uh, Ohio River Valley. So that certainly means a, a nice uh, warm-up for us. However, now moisture is beginning to return off to our west as the flow becomes uh, southerly out of the western Gulf of Mexico. By Saturday, a week from today, we're definitely well established under the ridge, so I think the day should be uh, dry. We've got those little uh, lobes of vorticity moving through the flow, so we may see some passing clouds from time to time. But the bulk of the rain should be uh, over in Oklahoma and Texas, as the next system is certainly uh, developing in eastern Colorado and extreme uh, western Kansas. Now, looking out into voodoo country, uh, there's a look. It looks like probably the Monday... Uh, late late Sunday, Monday, and maybe early Tuesday time frame, uh, that would be the 1st of April, Monday. So that looks like a, a, wet, a bit of a wet period for us. We certainly dry out, but we do get a little bit of a glancing blow by the 5th from a strong short wave that's moving through the uh, Great Lakes area. And that, that could drag something into our area, but I don't think it's going to be a, a major uh, uh, rainfall event. And then when we get out to the very end of the period, around the uh, 7th of April, and this is 372 hours out, so it's way out into voodoo country, we do see that uh, another strong um, trough is developing off to our west. And, of course, that uh, will spell eventually, if that is what happens, which will spell eventually another uh, wet day around the uh, 9th or 10th of April. Well, that'll do it for the Weather Extreme video. I uh, appreciate you tuning in. Uh, we'll be back with the next one first thing on Sunday morning, March 24th. In the meantime, stay tuned to the blog for the latest weather information as we follow the uh, evolution of the system that we're dealing with right now. Have a great day and Godspeed. Thank you for trusting us to be your number one source for news in all of Central Alabama. In back-to-back -back ratings periods, more people watched ABC 3340 than any other station in Birmingham.